Okay, let's go live with James speaking, trainingsites.io. Uh, last week, OpenAI brought out their agent builder. I did a video, I thought it was really cool. It came out with a list of 100 agents that you could build with agent builder that would be great for your business and even give you the opportunity to generate real revenues from it. So I had these uh, concrete, I show you these ones right here. There was 100 concrete AI agent ideas for course creators and educators. Uh, this document is free for you. It's in the trainingsites.io community. Uh, the video's there. Everything's there. You can download this. 100 great ideas. And I was looking at these for myself and trying to figure out which of the ones of these I should start implementing or start using. Uh, and I got looking at them and I went, whoa, 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 wait a second. I think there's a problem here. Um, for me personally, a lot of these I shouldn't build. Now, I'm not saying that is the case for you. But for me personally, I'm looking at a list of really cool agents that can be made. A lot of them shouldn't be made. And what I'm going to do today is I'm going to go through a little bit of a framework and a prompting setup that I have and I have created so that I can evaluate what do I need to do with this AI leveraging opportunity that I have. We're going to go over the four different types of kind of things that you're hearing about right now about ways to leverage AI, especially in the education space. Um, then I'm gonna go over uh, the framework and then I'm gonna show you how it actually gets applied in real life. Now, if you're not familiar with the Agent Builder and all of those pieces that are in place there, Agent Builder is from OpenAI uh, and it was announced l last week, I guess. They did a couple things. One is it's a drag and drop thing that allows you to build your own agents. That was the first thing. The second thing is, is it allows you to do or hook up your own chat bot based on your agent. So it's kind of those two pieces that are, right? Um, so there's agent builder here. And again, watch the video that I did previously on these ones to explain them, but I just want to talk about these three points. Agent builder is that canvas for creating or using chat GPT to actually think through situations, to evaluate situations and take next steps. So that part is there, that's the agentic part uh, from a high level. The next part is, is that is it has a connector registry. And this is the really powerful part about agents. When you give an agent a task and it can evaluate the best way to get to what the goal is, sometimes it needs some tools and they also included the connector registry. And this is a place that allows the agent to basically connect to the tools that it needs or tool or other agents to be able to get the task done. And this is really cool because you can create all sorts of uh, connectors and it uses MCP, which is that model context protocol or that universal connector for AI agents. Um, and you can have it connect to things like a Notion database, or in my case, the WordPress site that I have and all of my content on WordPress. Maybe it's just a calendar or your Google suite or some other piece of software that has an MCP connector. Uh, and then this chat kit is allowing you to have chat based agents working on your site and or other people's sites. So I put together these hundred ideas of ways that that might be used. And I was just trying to look at them and I was figuring out first, do I even bother or do I need to make them? And that's what I want to kind of cover uh, now. Now there's four words that you're gonna hear. I'm not gonna go into them in terms of deep explanations of them, but what I will do is I want you just to kind of know the names uh, and where they kind of fit in with this. Because when I look at leveraging AI in an education business, and I'm talking about more than creating content, there's stuff that happens before content about doing research and putting together all of the pieces before you actually get live or online with people to actually interact with them. And then it's a business. There's all sorts of stuff after the fact, right? Whether that be with stuff with students or business growth or community growth, there's a whole bunch of stuff that's there. And, and I think for everyone, it's like, they're super excited about AI. They wanna be able to leverage it. And you start out with this ChatGPT or Gemini text prompt response but at some point you're gonna start going, man, there's gotta be more than that. And these are kind of the terms that you'll often uh, hear of. You'll hear about custom GPTs. And again, I have videos on all of these. Custom GPTs are a simple way to use the same prompt in the same situation 
and always get a similar response based on what goes into the front of the custom GPT. I'll show you one of those quickly in a second. We have AI automations, which are ways for using a trigger and a response and a chain of items or structured workflow. There's some tools that allow you to do that. Some of the popular ones right now are N8N or Zapier or Make. Um, there's Vibe coded apps. These are tools, for example, like Lovable or Bolt or V.0. These are all tools that allow you to basically prompt in and it'll create an application for you just based on you telling it what you want the application to do. But this is an interface that is made available that connects to all sorts of additional resources that is for a specific task or outcome. And then here's this thing called Agents, which has just come out. We've got these four things and you're trying to figure out, man, where and what should I use to leverage it? Here it is. Here's the kind of things that you want to think about moving forward. And actually, before I do that, I'm going to just show you these examples of these ones so that you see it and you understand where they are. So let me just do that first uh, so that we can actually go and play around with that. Um, and I'll do this one here. Okay, so here's ChatGPT. This is a custom GPT that I made. And what it does is it creates 15 scored video thumbnail titles and scores. So the titles and thumbnails and as a scoring system. So basically I just say a video about this and it will create a list of 15 combinations and score them on five different characteristics that I've identified. So it doesn't matter. I'm not putting a prompt in each time to say, hey, or come up with a title and thumbnail. It's like, here's one that's repetitive that I got to do every single time. And I want to make sure that I have consistency across it. So I created a custom uh, GPT. I have another one here, which is an application that I built in Bolt. Uh, I think it was Bolt. I did this one in. This is one that's something that I have to do all the time, but it is a set process that I know what I want. And in this case, all I do is I create a YouTube video. I have a set of prompts that I can pick from. And what happens is that in the background, this application goes and creates a tutorial on my website, goes and posts to social media, and it also goes uh, and it creates an email that I can broadcast to my members about how or about the new tutorial. Now, the reason I do this is it's a set process, it's something I have to do every single time I do a YouTube video, and I know exactly what I want and how I want it. And it's an application because I had to connect it to things, right? I have to go to YouTube to get the transcript. I have to go to my website to be able to log in and get it. That application is set up for that particular piece. I also have some other ones here that I created with opal.google. Uh, and this one allows me to basically create mini apps to do something similar. And these are kind of step-by-step -step, uh, automations you know, to create learning types. Uh, that's not a good example. Uh, what would be one? I think I have some multi-step ones here. So yeah, for example, and all you have to do is basically put a prompt in and it creates an app that can be used, sold and delivered to people. So having said that, we've got these different choices, right, on what we're going to actually use and how these fit together. How do you decide which one? Well, you're going to use this one here, which is my AIM framework. This is the one that I came up with. It helps me figure out what should I spend my time doing? Is it worth turning into an agent? Is it something I should vibe code as an app? Is it something that just should be an automation? Or maybe it's only a custom GPT? Or maybe I don't need any of that and it's just something that I should go and make a prompt on every once in a while. So here's, uh, we'll go through these quickly and then I'm gonna show you an example of uh, how they fit in in real life. So here's the questions you need to ask yourself. I call it AIM. There's two M's and a T. Uh, the last one is just kind of a check, extra check on it. But the first part is, is ask, does it solve a recurring pain point? Now notice that this is a problem that you can identify and it's also something that is worthwhile fixing. It's something that is causing slowing things down. It's something that you hate doing. It's something that is a hassle. It's something that you just want to get rid of. And how many times does it happen? Is it once a month? Is it once a day? Is it three times a week? How many times does it happen? So you need to be able to score this and just say, yeah, it's a pain point. And yeah, it happens on a regular basis. 
I'm going to attach a score to that so that I know kind of where it fits in that scale. Uh, I is for inspect. So is this part or can I take a look at it and how much of the process still involves me? Am I the human in the loop? Can I replace myself completely? How does this actually integrate to the existing workflow? So you got to spend some time uh, uh, inspecting it and thinking out where does this actually fit in and how does it integrate to my existing setup? And I'm going to show you how important that is in a second. Um, measure. Is it something I can measure? Is it, in most cases for business, it's like, is it going to save me time? Is it going to save me money? Am I going to generate more money? So where does that fit in? What am I measuring? So what is it that I need to measure? Can I measure it? And when I do measure it, is it something that is worth actually spending time on? Even if it is something that I identified is uh, something that I can automate and it is a pain point, but you know, is it really something that is costing me that I need to identify and work on? And then other one is monetize. And I think monetize is one that a lot of people are going to have to kind of wrap their head around because anytime we're doing this AI leverage stuff, it always seems to be about how can I save myself time? How can I save myself money? One of the big things is in any of these tools, the ones we're just looking at here, all of these are saleable. So if you're going to spend time making one, is it something that you can monetize externally of your own business? Is it something that's easy to explain? Is it something you can share with people in terms of delivering it? Is it something you can license? Is it something you can sell? How much revenue from it? Is it something that you want to actually spend time doing that? Is it something that you can monetize externally and use internally? So figure out that monetization strategy and where it fits in. And then finally, the T here is for time. Now, the reason you think of time is stuff is happening so quickly in the AI space. You got to at least have a scoring system of one to five. And I'll show you why in a sec. You have to kind of figure out it's like, what's happened three months from now or six months from now? Is this something that I can start now and I can extend it over time as things change? Or is this a one and done and I've only got three months of use of it or six months of use of it? So if you take a look at those things and score them, you're going to have a pretty good idea of is it something that, first of all, that I should create? And then finally, which is the best way to actually go and create it? So let's take a look at where this fits in. And I'm going to open up another document here. Make sure that I'm in the right space. Where did I put it? There we are. This is, I want to, you know, I want to show you something that's interesting here. And I have this, uh, I'm going to pull this one, never build these agents. I basically put a playbook together and this is available for you. And it goes through these steps that we just went through with some examples. Um, and one of the ones here, this kind of one to five thing that I put in here, it's like one is not really five is, yeah, absolutely. You know, automate, it can run without you. And there's a, you can go through these ones and pick it out. And basically the score says, you know, if it's a 20 to 25, yeah, build it. Uh, 10 to 19, think about it or simplify it or take a look where it is. Uh, and then less than 10, don't build it. And those are the ones that I came out with. And then pick the right tool for the job, whether it should be an agent, a custom GPT, those kind of things. So I have this uh, kind of thing to allow you to figure out which one that it is and the scoring system. And again, this is all available to you. I've also included some prompts on how to set this up for yourself and even create your own custom GPT or your agent based on this. It's available. Now, the one thing that always jumps out at me that's kind of interesting is that very first one, um, or this one here, is, is it worth the pain and, and time, energy and effort? Yes. Is it something that happens on a regular basis? Yes. Um, and then the one here is integrate. It's like, does it fit into my existing business already? Or where does it fit into my business? And sometimes I do this myself. And if you're thinking about anything to do with any of these AI automations, the one thing I want you to do is with that eye is just take a look and say, do I already have a tool that I can use that has nothing to do with AI? Because you probably do. And I'll give you an example of how that can happen. If I go back to our 100 concrete uh, AI agents and we go back through this, and I was looking through these and I was going, wow, which are the ones that I can actually use? 
because there's some great ideas here. And a lot of them were ones that were all about uh, internal ones, right, in the community. The one that I had here that kind of jumped out at me was an onboarding uh, bot. So if you're getting someone in a class, in a course, in a community, in your membership area, you need to have an onboarding bot or something that says, hey, welcome. This is how you use the site. This is where you should go. This is how you should do things. And it should be personalized to them, right? It should be something that they get that is unique to them as they experience, in this case, your community. And if you look at this on paper, you go, man, that is an absolutely awesome idea. I should build an agent for that so that I guide everyone through the site and the community. Now, here's the big problem. If I go over and I take a look at, in my case, Fluent CRM, which is the CRM tool that is built into our community, one of the things that it does is automations. And I already have an automation that is the welcoming series, say onboarding bot. And what this does is it tags the people as they get registered for the site. It starts sending out an onboarding series. It updates their contact records. It adds people to certain parts of the community. It adds a tag saying they're doing the onboarding to get started so I know where they are in the process. Checks to see if they're a free or a paid member. Uh, and it also starts and adds them to a complete series of emails. And in this particular case, we've got an email sequence that comes out here, and I think it's the onboarding one. Uh, where's the one that I'll see if I can get here? I think it's on the next page. But I'll just show you. It's got, I think there's 10 uh, welcome series email sequence. Yeah. So I got eight emails that are in here, and this is all automated. So welcome to the site. Just checking in. Need help. These are all done, the amounts that are sent, who's open it, who's unsubscribed, all of these pieces are here. So why am I talking about this and why is it important? And as much as all of these are really cool things to do, ask yourself, do I really, really, really need to do it? Or is there another tool that is one that I already have that I can do it with? And just take a look and say, spend your time on the ones that make sense. So just because you can make an agent, doesn't mean you have to make an agent. And what I did on this one is I thought, you know what, I better go and take a look at what was happening on this one. And uh, I did create or go through an agent evaluator because that's what I was creating. Maybe I should have a bot for that, right? Maybe I should have a custom GPT. Maybe I should have an app for that. So what I did is I actually went through and scored it myself to go through and see, is it something that I can automate? Yeah, I can automate this. Is it something that fits in to what I have already in my systems? For example, MCP connection uh, to my thing. Is it something I can sell with a kit and connect it to other people's ones? Yeah, is this something I can monetize? Is it something I can measure? And is it something that's gonna be available? Yeah, it does. So this one's 23 out of 25. And its recommendation is build it as an agent. So I'll leave the prompts with you. Uh, this will be in the site. You can go and create your own agent. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but take a look at all of these things where you need to leverage or would want to leverage AI to remove yourself from tasks that you can get done well enough and or better than you're currently doing them that is a measurable result for you and just get rid of those. Get your employees to take care of those. It just so happens that these are AI employees and they might be a agent, they might be an app, and they might be an automation. My name is James, it's trainingsites.io. I hope you enjoyed this. I try and do one of these uh, or two of these every day. Uh, like and subscribe to the channel. Make sure to go to trainingsites.io forward slash join uh, and uh, join in the community, share your story. Let us know what's going on wins and celebrations, tools and services you're using, ask some questions, and uh, hopefully you'll be able to start, build, and grow your own education business. Take care and expect the best.